Hey guys, Nick here, and today, since we are finally done with What If Madison's Family Joined Rick, a 28 series parter, we are now getting into another remake, and that will be What If the Governor Met Negan. <laughs> now, I feel that I could have done this a long time ago, considering the context of it all, but... I never really thought there was a need to make a remake, or either that I didn't have time to, because approximately one year ago, almost two years, this was at the start of my channel, and it has sparked over 7,000 views, 200 likes, and 67 comments, making it one of my most top videos on the channel. And that will probably always be the case unless some crazy video overtakes it, which it probably might. But anyways, since The Walking Dead has now gotten on to the spin-off territory, and these characters, one of them being dead, have expanded far beyond whatever I thought originally, whenever I, you know, got into The Walking Dead, made this channel, yada yada yada, I thought it best, albeit with also some other people commenting it, that this series needed rehashed like several others have been and will be for the future. So without further ado, let us dive into an actual series revolved around these two, like my Negan and Maggie little mantra. Anyways, let's set the scene. Picture your heads back to the governor killing all of his men, and then going to Woodbury after being left behind, burning it all down, and then being on his own. This time, I will take a page out of my Sophia story and say that the governor going will go slightly the same direction, if not a slightly different direction, or a different direction entirely. So, he's still the same as he was, but slowly but surely... He starts to falter like he did before he saw, you know, Megan. But this time, even though he has gone a different direction, he luckily runs into Negan, or, you know, a savior before Negan, before he actually dies. And this would make the most sense, like Sophia, because even if it were to go a different direction, it's also a what if, and considering the context, Negan at this time, I feel wouldn't be too, too far away. But anyways, Negan takes a liking to the governor with the eye patch and the beard and him looking pretty terrifying like season five Rick and looks at him and like, yeah, he knows this guy's going to die and asks him to join since he's pretty much on death's door. The governor, seeing that he really doesn't have a choice since he's about to die, just up and takes this without too much for words as he was whenever, you know, he met Lily and Tara and them. Negan smiles, saying that he ain't as intimidating as he's made out to be, but he must have been through a lot to look like that, with not really meaning to be too much of a jerk. But this is like season six Negan, stuff like that, so we could expect him to be kind of a jerk. Which, not to say he's still not one, but you guys get what I mean. So soon enough, they go to the sanctuary, where, yes, they would be around the sanctuary around this time, because it's not too far off from when they met Negan, and the governor gets all cleaned up, shaves his beard, and looks completely unrecognizable, at least to Negan's eyes, because he just, it's pretty much like when he saw that little videotape of season five Rick with Deanna. He really is like, is that you under all that man bush? And that would, context would be delivered much earlier to the governor. And he was like a completely different person. And soon enough, the governor kind of begrudgingly, because, you know, it's not like he asked to be here, gets to know all the saviors, the sanctuary, what they're about, and mind you, 
this is still season four territory. So by the point of them getting to the sanctuary and get doing all that stuff, this would be around season five, kind of. So yeah, which means the Croat would still be around. And yes, this is the first story that I'm going to be including the Croat. And I know I mentioned him in like my, I think Sophia joined Negan and Madison's family joining Rick stories, but now he will be included and mean a lot for the details of this story. Meanwhile, before we cut to them a little bit more, we're going to explain a little bit of what's going on in the prison. And this is going to be back and forth between Rick's group and the governor and Negan, because that's how it was with Sophia and Negan. Got to shapeshift it a little bit. Rick and Carl's relationship would be a lot different here because the governor would never show up, so Carl has no reason to hate him. And the prison would remain in good shape. Also, you might be wondering what's going to happen to the Chamblers because of the governor not being there. Well, just like my other stories, I included Tara being the only one to live and then being a savior, but as of my Madison's family joining Rick story, I'm going to include a new mantra to this particular detail, if the governor were not to go there, of course. Tara and Megan being the ones to survive, joining the militia, and then Pete being the leader, obviously, and joining Negan. So yes, Negan now has the governor and the tank again. But it won't be lost in the same way that it was in my other story, I assure you. It will be much different to how the tank is shown in the Savior Saga this time. Not to say it will be lost, but I ain't going to spoil anything yet. But anyways, like I said, the prison would remain in utter good shape, and the virus would start to slow down, but still be a problem. Herschel would also still be alive, at least for now. And... Him and Michonne would go out, burn the bodies, and nothing bad would happen. Dara and Beth would also start to develop a relationship, because I've literally included it in all my stories, and I guarantee you that it would happen. It, it, it would happen. And Bob and Sasha would officially get into a relationship themselves. Tyrese would also still be around. Now that he wasn't around after the prison arc, he's just around. And would still be looking for Karen and David's killer. Because remember, before the governor did his whole thing there, he was still looking. Also, Lizzie and Miko would still be around because they died, like, not even before, before, before season five, pretty much. Anyways, that conversation is actually what we need to talk about here. Because of the governor not being here and doing a little tank kaboom and everybody getting ransacked and everything going to crap, basically. This means that the conversation between Rick, Daryl, and Tyrese down in the lower part of the prison would actually come to pass fully. And Tyrese would learn that Carol is the one who killed Karen and David. Not that he didn't learn originally, but this time... It would be Rick and Daryl that told him instead of Carol. Because remember, Carol is banished. She ain't coming back because there's no prison fight. She has no need to ever come back with them. And Tyrese would be shocked at this, I'm sure. Much more shocked than whenever he found out from Carol's own lips before season five. But I feel that he would eventually come to understand why she did it and understand that Carol isn't a bad person. He even openly admitted it, but he doesn't mean that he would be happy about it. But he at least, at this point, understands where Rick is coming from. And Daryl, of course, because he was by the side. Also, Lizzie's craziness would soon be discovered, and it would be discovered also that she is the one who had been feeding the walkers rats. And Rick would eventually come to understand how crazy Lizzie is with the walkers and everything, and that she needs to ultimately be taken down. So he offers to do it himself. Not that he wants to kill a child, but eh, it kind of has to happen. But unfortunately, he can't bring himself to do it, like I had had him do in small other stories. Not too many of them, but still. Because then... This is a different Rick we're talking about. 
His mind flashes to when he killed Sophia as a walker, and also Lori and Shane dying. And because this Rick has far more different dynamics than the other Ricks I've covered, well, not too far to some, but close enough, this means that whenever it comes to this, he wouldn't be able or want to do it this way. Especially season four, Rick. Daryl just does the job for him. Because Daryl, honestly, is one of those characters where he didn't really care about many situations, or if any, unless it came to, like, his family and stuff like that, or so to speak, family. Mika would be kind of upset about this, but when you really think about it, it, this was bound to happen. She even openly admitted that her sister was sick. So I feel that she would accept this eventually, like Tyrese accepted the whole Karen and David situation in the canon storyline and in this one. Speaking of Carol, like I said, because of the prison fight not happening... This means that she would have no reason to go back, and she would be out on her own, and yes, she would still survive, but she would make her way sort of towards the way of Terminus, but not really, really that way. She wouldn't even be able to find the signs yet, because she would be in the area looking for stuff and basically trying to do what Rick said survive, essentially, and it's very hard for her because she really cared about the group and now she's banished, but before she can drew on this further and continue just by herself, she gets encountered by three people. Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene are in the flesh, and they ask her if she is willing to join them, for Eugene has the cure for all of what's happened. Carol being Carol. Well, that's up to you guys. What do you think? Do you think that this Carol who's currently banished from the group will ever want to go with these people to ter- uh, Washington? Or do you think that this Carol who has not come back with the group because of the whole prison fight not happening thing... Do you think she'll want to even go anywhere at all? Or do you think that this is the same Carol and that the adventure with her will be a lot different than you might think? And that's where we leave things for the moment. Nice little first part here. I know I didn't cover Negan and the governor too much here, but you can obviously tell that the story is going to take a much more dramatic turn than whenever I covered this a year ago. And I think that's ultimately for the best. Especially when it comes to the two villains that we've talked about here. But what do you guys think? You think this is a good first part? Leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.